street food tour. Marrakesh is a hectic city, 24 hours a day. I don't know where to look. Oh my god, it smells so good. Let's say Let's say They're not my favourite. Let's do it. How cool are these? The best. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> good afternoon from the Red City that is Marrakesh here in Morocco. We have already seen the amazing sights and smelt the smells of the streets, but we haven't actually tasted a huge amount of what Marrakesh has to offer. So today, this evening, we're actually heading out on a street food tour with Marrakesh Food Tours, and we are super, super excited. They told us to come hungry and said that we would leave rolling out of the Medina. So hopefully that is what happens today. Um, we're meeting at the main square. The sun is going down. It won't be too hot. I'm ready to eat all that Marrakesh has to offer. Marrakesh is a hectic city, 24 hours a day, but especially at night. And as the evenings are getting later, we are starting the street food tour in the evening. You wouldn't think so, being how hot and how bright it is, but I have worked up a bit of a hunger and we are meeting our guide on the main square. The main square is just the best at night. It is the most entertaining place in the world. It's 6.30 and the square is just starting to warm up. As you can hear, there's lots of shouting, lots of clapping. Um, so many more street food stores in the yeah, day. There is so much going on, like I don't know where to look. Hello. 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 Hey. 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 Nice to meet you. <laughs> we have met our guide, Mohammed, and he's wandering us around. I'm excited to try some food. Our first place that we are seeing on the tour is Meshwi. Alley, um, and this is a tiny little alley, and I can feel the heat already. Basically, it's a dish that's cooked deep down into a charcoal fire. This is the place where the meshwi gets cooked on meshwi alley a huge, deep hole, and I can just feel the heat radiating. They get, basically get a whole lamb, put it on a stick, put it inside, and it cooks in that deep hole. You better be careful. I know I, you could fit in there. I will definitely be burning in there. And now it's time to eat. Many hours of cooking, of slow cooking. Wow! wow. Slow cooking. Uh, this comes straight from a deep down of the oven where these dishes are actually buried in ashes. In burning ashes. Oh my god, it smells so good. Welcome to the dish of Marrakesh. That this was the coolest presentation ever. Amazing. The coolest presentation ever. So this is a tangier, not a tangine, um, and it is basically roasted and it just is just full of goodness and fat and it smells really, really good. You basically pops for hours. Yeah, hours and hours. So I'm imagining this is gonna be super soft, but our guide Mohammed told us you break up a small bit of bread. Oh, this is going to be funny. You have to eat with your hands. Yeah. And then you Scoop. break it down and you scoop some meat, some juices. So it's like a little tiny sandwich. And voila. Welcome to the flavors. Welcome, Welcome to the, the flavors. flavors. <laughs> wow, yeah. I mean, everything that we had described is in there. It's zesty, it's meaty, it kind of tastes like gravy. The meat is so, so soft. The lemon, mmm. It's so nice. So we actually had to wash our hands when coming in because you don't get cutlery yeah. in these places. You have to do it the traditional way with your knife and fork, which is your hands. And we get a nice bit of bread. You can just smell them smells. It's so zesty. You can pick up the lemon. It's just coming through so, so much. And then the lamb just melts away. We're not the biggest lamb eater, so I'm surprised. I'm going to see what you think. Mm. It really, it doesn't taste like what I've ever tasted lamb No, like. it's so, it, yeah. yeah. It's so fragrant, it's so zesty. It's actually the perfect dish for a hot summer's day. Let's say her. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Minty. Minty. No? 
Yeah, cut the difference from the other two. So this is what is cooked in that deep hole, I've, the meshua. The meshua. 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 I've broken off a small bit. It isn't the type of lamb that I'd be used to. It's uh, obviously slow cooked for a lot of hours down in the little pit. And then you add, is this salt? Salt and cumin. Salt and cumin. You're meant to do it without the bread. But I'm trying it the uh, modern way. This, way. this might be the new way. <laughs> okay. So basically that deep mm. hole has cooked to this dish for you. It's smoky. It's very That's smoky. Um, tender. And you said there's not, it doesn't get no added. Season. Yeah, no seasoning added. Yeah. Nothing is added, no, yeah. no spices, nothing. 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 So it's marinated itself yeah. in the pit. Different to what you expected? Yeah, it's not too bad. Before, actually. I'm very proud of Matt for trying that. I actually liked the tangier, and you can actually get it with vegetable, you can get it with fish and other meats, but the most traditional is that. Our next stop is actually right opposite where we were, and apparently all these streets used to have specific things that they would sell. So obviously we were at the Meshwi Alley, which sells just that. We're now at the Olive Valley. Alley. Again, I don't, I don't like olives, but I'm gonna try. Matt was brave. I'm gonna be brave. Brave. <laughs> I love olives. <laughs> Oh, mint smells so good. And actually, what's good about the mint, it's actually it helps in digesting the Yeah. Food. That means a hearty meal like the tangia, And then you instance, drink mint tea. When tea, it washes it. <laughs> Not only it does helps. it smell good, but it's good for you as well. Here, there's a variety of olives, are all coming from the same tree. It's just different ripeness. Early, like September, October, this would maybe mid November, December, the last would be black. Maybe till January in some places. This is my perfect street. This is the Olive Street, and there's actually no competition, which is crazy. You've got like 10 to 15 olive sellers, and they think it is fate as to why I'm here trying the olives. Oh, they look so good. We're gonna go with the black olives black first, and they actually cure them in these huge barrels. They're just you see everywhere. Beside me. Oh, the smell. The smell is so good, Molly. You are missing out. I am, mm. but I just, I, I just love the meat. So sweet. Mm -hmm. So right. Oh. This would be more as well served as well as side dish, mm -hmm. like a salad. How spicy is it on a scale of one to ten? Mm. It's a nice kick. If you don't like olives and you think they're a little bit bitter, Molly, you you like them. Right. I've only ever tried them once in my life. Second time, Matt's persuaded me. Ah! Why am I so nervous to try an olive? Okay. Ah! What do you do with a pip? Pop it out. Pop out. They're not my favourite. Um, no. My eyes are watering. I don't know if that's, thank you, I don't know if that's the chilli or just the sourness. A summer crop. They grow wild in the hedges and fences of farms and it's a fence which keeps the animals away but at the same time people pick up this freshly <laughs> cooked and then this guy as you see is peeling them for his customers and they eat. We've seen these everywhere, prickly pears. They're so intriguing, they're tiny and they're prickly little fruits and I am very excited to try them. As you can see, he is just literally slicing the skin off and he leaves the skins to the end to count them and see how many he sold. I'm trying a prickly pear. <laughs> is it good? Is it good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's I'm ready. Shukran. Oh no! You dropped it! <laughs> I dropped the prickly pear! <laughs> I'm gonna hold it. Take two. Right, take two. Prickly pear. Okay, I'm so excited. Oh my god. Wow. It's like a cross between a passion fruit, pomegranate, and kiwi. And apparently it's good for your stomach. That's what the ladies are saying anyway. Mm. A prickly pear, you would have to see it to believe it, but we are now leaving the main square and heading into some of the local neighbourhoods on the hunt for a Moroccan sandwich. This is crazy. This is the Debachi Street or neighbourhood and it is basically Sandwich Street. These are crazy sandwiches, no actual name, and it is a load of meat. We have minced meat, we have sausage, chicken, turkey, tomatoes, onion, spices, all together with an egg on top, and probably everything else. Shukran. Shukran, thank you. It's huge. It's getting so busy here now. I think we've kind of created a crowd. I don't know if you can hear it, it's noisy, but I'm going to get stuck right in. 
Moroccan sandwich, a little bit of everything. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Do you know what it tastes like? That is crazy. You know the kofta tagine we had? It tastes like that with the egg, the meat, all the spices. It's burning hot. And of course, it's in bread. I mean, they haven't actually come up with a name for this. So I'm thinking maybe we could sandwich. start a little business going on and call it the Moroccan sandwich or the Marrakesh Moroccan masterpiece. Let's do it. Oh, that's good. It's so sweet, isn't it? Mmm. And the chili sauce on top. Yeah, really good. Mm. Can you imagine how good these would be on the way home after a night out? That's what I was thinking. It reminded me of like when you go and get a kebab. Mm. So good. Shukran, thank you. How cool are these? Are we cheersing with donuts. This is so funny. This is the Moroccan donut. And actually, because it's so hot, they have to tie it in a string. You can see the guy is cooking them there. Deep frying them. Third generation. Um, third generation donut man. But it's still a little bit hot, but I'm going to dip it in honey anyway. Because I can't wait. I'm a very impatient eater. Well, that was a close up. Ooh. Oh, wow. Is it? That is so good. A little bit hot. I probably should have waited, but they're really, really good. So fresh. Without Mohammed, we wouldn't even know that this part of the Medina exists. We have come onto the Ben Mansour Cafe rooftop right next to the Ben Salah Mosque to try. Is this the juice? Are we trying the cucumber. to try a cucumber juice? Basically, the rooftop bar of the Medina. Sukran. Yeah. Wow, Sukran, thank you. Thank you very much. Sukran. The views are amazing. We don't have a sunset today, but no, no sunset, I'm loving the view. Yeah, it's a bit hazy today, but we do have an amazing view. And this is hilarious. I was expecting to drink my juice, but I have in a glass. Can, can I... we drink it, Mohammed, like yes. this? Yeah, <laughs> we can pick I it up and drink. Like Go on then. Ah! It's good? <laughs> the best. This is meant to be super refreshing. So cucumber, orange, and obviously some mint because in Morocco, everything has mint. I'm not gonna be drinking it like that. I'm gonna have it from the spoon. Oh yeah, wow. Mm. So refreshing. Doesn't really taste of cucumber that much. I get more orange from it, but um, it's definitely hydrating me. We just got to visit the coolest, most unique place I think I have ever seen. We went to a local hammam and we basically saw how the coal and the fire heats the hammam, but it's also used to cook the t t tangier. But it's also used to cook the tangier. This won't happen in every hammam, only really in the local areas so cool. of the Medina. It was unbelievable to get access, to go in there and to see how it was done was just amazing. But now we have made it to Fatima's to try her famous <laughs> vegetable it couscous. Looks so good. Look it, at it looks, it looks so good. And we're literally in the old second hand yeah, market. You would never find her. this place. She's coming. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Come in. And this is Fatima who made this. Each grain was literally hand rolled by herself. Like that, you can see the is love. Is it good? The best. Yeah. Ah. It was starfish. The pressure's on. Fatima's watching me. It looks unbelievable, though. The caramelized onion, the grains, the carrots, the cinnamon, the raisins, the smell. She says it's the best. So we got to take her word for it. Yeah. <laughs> she knows already. She's already smiling. And she knows it's the best. Wow, that is um, unbelievable. Extra caramelized, lots of cinnamon, and lots of love. Actually, our guide Mohammed said that normally when loads of couscous is left over, you actually eat it with buttermilk. So this will be our first time that we've ever had. I think it can make sense because the grains can be dry on their own. I just don't know about this buttermilk and couscous, but here we go. First time for everything. Weird. Do you know what? It's like yogurt. Couscous, yogurt, it just tastes very refreshing. Shukran, thank you so much, the best. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Shukran. Problem. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers to our last stop, and it is a smoothie stop. We have a few smoothies and a few Moroccan sweets and pastries, and I'm going straight in with the 
the strawberry one and people watching. So I think it's like one of the best things um, to do. Oh, that is really good. Oh wow, so so fresh. The strawberries are so nice. I'm actually just gonna quickly try the avocado one. I don't know how I feel about avocado smoothies. Seem strange. They do seem strange. Normally like avocado on toast, but. <laughs> have it in a glass instead. It's slightly thicker. It's really weird, it's like you're drinking liquid guacamole that's sweet. This is the most unique looking of the three. This is the panache. Panache in English actually means fancy, so I'm gonna call it the fancy smoothie. It's actually lined with orange rather than milk, so it's more of a, a fruit juice yeah. rather than a milkshake, and it has four or five different fruits inside of it. So very, very healthy. Is very you very like panache. You panache. I've got loads of panache. <laughs> Oh, that's really good. It's um, mm, that mango is coming through. Mango, pineapple, mm, pineapple, hint of orange. Mm, perfect. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Amazing. You're very welcome. So we are here expecting you. Come to Marrakesh, visit us, and eat the food of Marrakesh. Oh, this thank you so much. Take care. Whew, good morning from a very very stuffed man in Marrakesh, Mohammed. Wow, he absolutely smashed it out of the park. He knew absolutely every spot in the Medina, and I feel like he knew absolutely every person. He's definitely a bit of a local celebrity. And Marrakesh food tours, I would highly recommend them. They were actually the first food tour in Marrakesh, so they've set the bar very high. They're the originals, they are the people to go to. I feel like it is the best way to try street food. There's a lot of street food going on in the main square, but they're not the proper ones. They're sort of set up for tourists. You just wouldn't know where to go. Blogs don't tell you where to go, so you need to go with the experts to see the lamb being cooked in the pit and trying Fatima's couscous. Well, I'm absolutely stuffed. I don't think I can eat anything for a few more days, which is probably a good job as we are heading to the Sahara Desert. I feel like I'm gonna need this hat. So we'll see you in the next one on the way to the desert. <laughs>